So much international news to talk to you about today. We'll start in Venezuela and then go to Ukraine. We're still working with our source in Venezuela, whose identity we are we are protecting. And after having a few more exchanges uh, uh, with our source, while at first I thought and maybe he thought that we were being overly cautious, he now has said, no, I think it's good that you're not even saying what city I'm in because the situation here is really getting quite bad. Let's get you up to speed on what's happening in Venezuela. There are continued protests from opposition groups which vary in terms of their placement on the political spectrum and the reasons they are protesting the Nicolas Maduro government. The primary opposition complaints right now, the reason these protests are happening are number one, general lack of security in the country. And this comes in terms of both safety, physical security and economic security. Inflation, 56 percent by some estimates in 2013, significant inflation and the opposition movement and protesters, which initially started with students protesting the out of control inflation in Venezuela and protests over the scarcity of basic goods like milk, sugar, in some cases, toilet paper. On February 12th, student groups started the protests and then opposition more formal opposition groups led by a, a, a few different parties, which I outlined to you on our Monday program, joined in and the protests grew relatively peacefully. Then there was a significant confrontation in the capital city of Caracas and two students and one government sympathizer died. And this significantly escalated tensions and really brought the protest and the entire conflict to a new level. As we mentioned, this led to the government blaming the opposition as being uh, fascist right wingers, although, as we explained, this is factually wrong. The opposition, as those who are pro government, range from liberal to centrist to conservative. Now, the latest news is that Leopoldo Lopez, who is the I don't know if I want to use the term de facto, but he is considered by many to be the opposition leader or at least the spokesperson for the opposition in great part. According to one source, he was supposedly initially detained for murders that he didn't commit, but was being blamed for causing in some way, shape or form. The latest that I got from a combination of Venezuelan sources and news running in Argentina right now is that he's in a maximum security holding facility. The legal process against him may continue with him kind of out on bail, as, as it were, or temporarily freed, or it may continue with him detained. The other bit of information we're getting is that an associate of Leopoldo Lopez named Carlos Vecchio may be detained soon if he has not already been detained. And he is an opposition member from remember that coalition opposition party I told you about Mesa de la Unidad. They are a coalition group that ranges. They include socialists, Marxists, social Democrats, more centrist individuals. He may be detained as well, possibly for he would be accused of an attempted coup or a takedown of the government, even though it's not really clear at all that that's the direction this is going. Now, Nicolas Maduro, the president of Venezuela, has accused the United States of financing the opposition specifically to destabilize the country under the premise that the U.S. wants to remove such a left wing regime. The last thing on this, the I don't I hesitate to call it a revolution. I, what I really want to call it is the the uprising that is taking place right now is being accused of being a, a muck, uh, like a muck revolution as it's being termed, meaning it's not really a grassroots uprising, but it is fueled by different. It's astroturf, essentially. And we do know that because of WikiLeaks documents that were leaked, specifically some emails, Cato, as well as a group called Canvas, were involved in pushing for a revolution in Venezuela years back. And there's no reason to think that they're completely uninvolved now. But we need to separate that, Lewis, from the reality that there are forces on the ground along the political spectrum that want to see the current administration go. Right. Uh, I wouldn't surprise me, of course, if, if there was money behind this, if there were uh, other interests uh, involved. 
I mean, why wouldn't there be? It, it's an opportunity for a lot of people. But uh, yeah, like you said, uh, there are all sorts of different political groups uh, and people across the political spectrum on the ground who do want change and who are upset. And we have to consider them, too. That's the latest we have in Venezuela. We'll continue to cover it. We will continue to be in touch with our sources there and uh, hope to keep everybody up to speed. This is when we do international stories. Sometimes the audience doesn't care at all. The reaction to Venezuela and to Ukraine, which we'll talk about in a second, seems to be overall. Some people say, David, I really don't care about either of these countries. But overall, the sense is that our audience is very interested in what's going on there. 